Welcome once again to another episode of Taint Smack and Oscar winning actor Tony Danza. That's Tony me. Danza. I, I'm Tony Danza. Tony Danza on Taint Smack. Taint. Uh, welcome to welcome to our pod. No, that, it's the Burn Hazard podcast. That was a surprisingly subdued introduction without any screaming. Yeah, I don't have to scream every single time. I expect it though. I mean, I don't, I don't always have to scream. You wanted to do an end of year review, 2021 in hindsight, talking about all the games that came out this year and all the movies. Well, maybe not necessarily the games and movies, but just things that we, things that we enjoyed. We're just kind of doing an end of year thing. Good, because I didn't play anything or do anything this he year. Did, yeah, he <laughs> didn't really do much. You and I recorded the Frontier for a full year. We didn't play any other games. Well, we played some other games. Yeah, there was a lot of stuff that came out this year, but I feel like. 2020 was just kind of overwhelmingly blah for most people. Are you talking about 2021? Sorry. I feel like 20... <laughs> you forgot what year we were in. Yeah. It's like, you know, that there's that meme of... Uh, Please tell me about the meme you saw. There's the meme of... Tell me about the meme me format. Still pro- me still trying to process 2019 and 2021 is, or 2022 is just going... <laughs> And running towards him. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. It yeah, so th- there was a lot of stuff that happened this year, so I thought maybe, you know, I would try to be positive and focus on the things that were good this year. Okay. Things that I enjoyed. Okay, there were things you enjoyed this year. Yeah, there were things I enjoyed this year. Okay. Um, In 2018, we did a top 10 for the year, each of us, but I don't think I'd have enough stuff to fill in that top 10 because I didn't play... 95% of games that came yeah. out this year. Well, I mean, you know, here's hoping that 2022 will bring some ga- some new games that you'll want to play, that well, you'll have fun with. I doubt it. I don't know. I think maybe. I, I think games have reached their peak and now it's all downhill. We can go back and... Have you seen the game where you play as a cat in a cyberpunk Tokyo? I have not. No, it looks awesome. Uh, <laughs> it's not out yet. No, but it, it looks awesome. It looks awesome. It's going to be just like Cyberpunk. It's going to be so amazing. No, that's a different thing, because this is a game where you just play as a cat. I'm saying you're getting your hopes up just like you got your hopes up about Cyberpunk. What's really funny, I'm getting off topic immediately. Of what's course really, you are. What's really funny to me is I'm seeing people saying like, Yo, Cyberpunk isn't that bad once I stopped expecting it to be an RPG. You know, the thing it's supposed to be, mm-hmm. a role-playing game. That's Well, that's how you have to look at Fallout 4. It's a pretty good game. If you forget that Fallout is always been an rpg yeah i'm trying to be more positive zach positive is such a thing even possible i know this is weird because for once mike is the one that's bitter and angry and i'm the one that's trying to be positive bitter and angry how dare you man go on bah humbug says mike yes in the spirit of the season all right well why don't why don't i start one of the one of the the first things i'll put on my list is um i moved in with my girlfriend and it's been going very well Jeez, I forgot that happened this year. Yeah, that happened this year. You helped me move. Yeah, I remember when we moved your couch in. That was a nightmare. Oh, God, that wasn't a... Okay, so... <laughs> so anyway, Zach got an apartment nearby mm-hmm. because... Closer to Mike. Yeah, so we could do some re- more recording. And then he well, bought a couch, but he didn't he didn't measure the dimensions. Or he did, but he overestimated how much he could squeeze measure- at the door. Well, Dimension-wise, it fit through the door. The the numbers the numbers did not lie. It did fit through the door. Sure. All you had to do was remove the hinges. And- All I had to do was remove the door off of the hinges because I, I measured the doorway, not how big it was just one inch past the doorway when the open door is now there. We had to remove the door. We had to remove the door off its hinges, and then we had to move the refrigerator. Mm-hmm. We're moving a couch. It's not like a simple chair. The thing's got a turn when it gets in there also i did not realize that the couch was only in two pieces it said sectional (laughs) so i assumed that the couch would be in multiple sections Mm -hmm. like each thing is maybe i don't know like two feet square i thought it would be like several two foot square sections that's a fair thing to assume no it was one piece that's like nine by three feet and then the other piece that's like six by four feet it's like trying to bring in a couch like you're playing Tetris and you're legitimately trying to put a uh, a four piece like an L block through yeah. your doorway. I should also note that the the moving into an apartment with my girlfriend and then getting a couch were not one right after the other. <laughs> there was like a good two three months in between moving into the apartment and where we sat in the living room on camping chairs in front of the TV. Because we didn't have a couch. We had a coffee table. <laughs> yeah. We had a thing to put the TV on. 
We had a big TV. You had a bed. But we oh, and we also didn't have a frame for the bed either. You just sit on the mattress on the ground. Yeah, just the mattress on the floor. We actually got the bed frame before anything else because we realized very quickly that we're both old and getting up off of a mattress on the floor was beginning to be cumbersome for each. <laughs> we would get up and just both of us are just old people like getting out of bed in the morning. <laughs> we got a really nice bed frame from Ikea. Mm -hmm. Actually, I, I that could be a whole separate thing. Just the amount of shit that Ikea has that is amazing. <laughs> Isn't it representative of our generation that you're, what, 35 years old and you finally got a bed frame? Yeah. Well, at my previous apartment, I had a bed frame, but it was one that we had basically got from Amazon mm. that was just like a wire mesh thing that made the most noise out of any bed frame I've ever seen in my entire life. It squeaks a lot when you got out of it. You could drop a feather on that bed frame and it would go... <laughs> yeah, so we got a really nice bed frame from Ikea that doesn't have a headboard because I don't understand the point of headboards. I don't, I don't know. It's an old thing, I guess. It's a, a carry guess. over. Yeah, but it doesn't have a headboard, and it's got nice silent closing drawers under it, so that we don't even need a we don't even need a dresser in our room anymore. Yes. I have three drawers on my side. She has three drawers on her side. You can just open those up. All my clothes are in there. It's great. And to think I go to all these houses and worked in all these houses that had giant walk-in closets. Who needs them? We do have a large closet, but there's not really a whole lot in it. I keep my shoes in the closet. Of course. Uh, so does she. She keeps all her shoes and our like our winter jackets and stuff. We keep those in the closet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But everything else is just like all of our shirts and pants are all just stored under your bed, stored under the bed in nice silent closing drawers. It is a lovely piece of furniture. I don't know how the fuck I'm going to get it out of the house when we move because <laughs> it is basically just once you put it together, it's just one big thing. I guess I could try to disassemble it. Same thing for that couch. It took an entire day to get it in that place. Now mm -hmm. we got to remove it and put it in a new place. I don't. Yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do. I might legitimately just be like, yeah, it's for the next person that moves in there. Just leave the couch behind. I love the couch we currently have, but I kind of wish I would have just bought the couch at Ikea. Mm -hmm. There was another place. Where was it? Oh, uh, freaking. We went to somebody's house. Macy's sells couches. I didn't even know that. I didn't even know Macy's was still around. Yeah, Macy's is still around. All right. Yeah, Macy's sells couches and they have some very nice ones. So I should have looked into that. Anyway. So that, that's yeah. a, a positive thing that happened to you. Moved in with my girlfriend. We got a brand new apartment. It's um, brand um, new, though. Brand well, new. that apartment complex has been there since like the 80s. So not brand new. So not brand new. It's newer in terms of apartment complex. You're living behind a blockbuster. I went to that blockbuster all the time. Yeah, growing up, I went to that blockbuster all the time. I actually, I moved into the exact same town that I grew up in. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, so, yeah. Your old stomping grounds. G quite literally. I'm right across the street from the grocery store I worked at when I was a teenager. <laughs> yeah, that's I'm, right across the street from it i um, remember yeah 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 there used to be a there used to be a blockbuster there i have fond memories of going to that blockbuster and the one time that i went to that blockbuster and i rented my parents let me rent a nintendo 64 Ooh, from that blockbuster that's right blockbuster used to rent out consoles yeah they used to blockbuster used to rent out vcrs <laughs> i didn't if you re if you remember <laughs> that i don't know i think they've rented out dvd players too did they rent out Betamax at any point? They must uh, have. They must have, but that was during, that was before I was capable of renting any, of knowing what those things were. And I'm pretty sure they went out of business before HD DVDs were a big thing, so. No, I think they were around at the same time. Maybe. They were, they were like, they were starting to go out yeah. right around that time. But this isn't, we're not, we're not talking about those. Anyway, we my got, apartment yeah, is, we got sidetracked. my apartment is, is quite nice. I'm very happy with it. They had renovated it right before we moved in. We just had, apparently somebody's been having, somebody in our apartment building has been having a problem with pests. Ooh, what kind of pests? Sparrows? Um, like cockroaches. Oh, those are actual pests. Yeah, like cockroaches or fruit flies or whatever. Um, so this person had called property management, was like, yeah, I got a bunch of bugs in my apartment. Send pest control back here. So pest control showed up and when they got there, the guy was like, well, my apartment's not clean. Don't come in yet. <laughs> so they came back the next day and it was just a freaking, uh, according to the pest control people, it was like a pit in there. Mm, okay. Every single time the pest control people have come into our apartment, they're like, it's so clean in here. It's not a festering boil on the ass of this complex. So there's got to be some real dirty people living in this apartment complex. Mm. All right, I guess put on some mouse traps and some cockroach traps and hope they don't come into your place. Well, it's okay because I am I am godlike at creating uh, fruit fly traps. We had some fruit flies. I poured a bunch of boiling water down the drain, so I think that got rid of most of them. Okay. 
I think I think I saw another one earlier today, so I might have to put some more fruit fly traps out. Maybe I'll probably have to pour more boiling water down the drains. But yeah, I'm I'm real good at making fruit fly traps. Okay. I'll tell the story of when I I forget where I went. It was when I was living at my one of I'm gonna say one of my previous apartments. Okay. I was living at one of my previous apartments when I had multiple roommates. Um, and when I left, one of my roommates had made refried beans on the stove. Okay. I was gone for a week. Mm-hmm. When I came back, the pot of refried beans, refried beans, <laughs> refried fried beans was still on the stove mm-hmm. after a week. Mm. And I couldn't see the beans anymore because it was completely covered in fruit flies. Oh, come on. That's gross. I was absolutely disgusted. Ugh. See, sometimes I'll leave food out on the on the stove for another day or two if I feel like I'm going to dig into it the next day, but you really got to put that stuff away. I can't I can't do that even for a day, but that's because of like the roommates that I had lived with before. Yeah. That did something like that. <laughs> Understand. Where the refried beans were sitting on the stove. I would have to go through and empty the refrigerator. Maybe like once a month, I would have to go through and empty out the refrigerator because they would buy stuff and then just shove it back in the corner. They would buy stuff and shove it in the refrigerator and then never and then use it like they would buy like two pounds of carrots to use one carrot mm. so that it would all go bad and just turn to slush in the bottom of the refrigerator. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, that's I, that is a huge bonus. I feel like I'm very I'm very fortunate that I don't have to live with roommates anymore. I feel like that's the thing that happened to both of us. We had ro- roommates that were absolutely disgusting, and now we both live our lives fairly impeccably clean. For the most part, yeah. You've your, got a bit more clutter than I do. pretty gross. Oh, yeah. I probably should, like, do it. A- you also don't have a lady living at the house that is just, that just wants to keep everything, like, spotlessly clean. Yeah, yeah. So. You're right, though. I probably should clean my toilet on a regular basis. Because every once in a while, it's like, hmm, it's been seven months, and it's looking pretty like, gross. I feel like you could, you could clean your, you could clean your house a little bit. Yeah, a little bit more regularly. Yeah, but, probably. I mean, for honestly, for for a bachelor, you're definitely living better than. Well, yeah, you're definitely living better than most of than people that I've lived with. Perhaps. Yeah. What do you have on your list now that I've done? Well, that technically was two things off of my list. I don't actually have a list. I just kind of wrote a few things down. Just wrote some things down. One of the things that I wanted to get done this year that I actually got done this year was finish my New Vegas mod that actually happened this year. Yeah, is that the the one that added a bunch of NPCs yeah. and like new quest lines and a handful things? of quests that you helped me voice? Yeah, it's a, it's a fairly simple mod. It takes maybe an hour or two to complete everything in there, but I, I, I thought it was pretty good. I thought it was pretty good. There's a lot of really good stuff in that mod. I thought I thought just like some of the random little characters you added, they were nice little tiny touches. To the game. Yeah, things that I felt could have been uh, added in the base game. A couple things they maybe should have put in there, like uh, an introduction to a few concepts early on in the game. Well, there's like the, I specifically remember the Legion one. There's the introduction to using poisons in the game. Because like, poisons are in the game and they never discuss it. Yeah, I tried to use these NPCs to showcase some of the mechanics that are maybe a little bit lesser known. Uh, One NPC tries to explain to you some basics on the card game in that game. The caravan card game. Somebody else tries to teach you about the weapon mods. So I, I tried to have a couple of the characters do that stuff. I played a dirty thief that stole someone's caravan cards. Yes, that is the person you were role playing as. I forget what cards he tells you to steal because, again, I'm, I'm never going to play caravan. <laughs> but anyway, that was a project that I wanted to work on. And I'd been working on it for a year, so I was hoping to get it wrapped up. And I was able to do that. So I'm glad that's I'm glad. I'm glad you were able to get that finished. Yeah, no, it's always good to put a project behind you so you can start working on something else. What's the next thing on my list? Ah, yes. Uh, I was able to finally, I was able to get a new car. The car's been absolutely lovely. It's working out well for you. So it's, it is so nice just to have a car that isn't constantly trying to explode mm-hmm. or seconds, seconds from detonation or overheating or... There's no blinking lights on your car, right? Except yeah. for maybe the turn signal, which functions. Yeah, everything fun. The turn signal doesn't want to catch fire. The car <laughs> doesn't suddenly accelerate in the middle of an intersection and try to kill me. It's it's really nice just having a nice functioning automobile. I agree. I've had my truck for a good few years now, and it's had very little. It's given, it's given me very little trouble, so I appreciate that. It's a nice burden lifted off my mind. It's not weighing me down. It's not a thing I have to continuously think about. Yeah. So that's that's very nice. What's what's another thing off of your list? Uh, I got a dog. Did you? Yeah. Where is it? 
it's not here anymore. I only had it for a day or two. Oh, that's right. You had a dog <laughs> for like two days. Yeah, I went to the shelter, the, the rescue shelter, and said, what kind of dogs do you have? And they said, take a look. And I said, all right, well, I'll poke around back there. How about this one? He seems mild-mannered. He's not barking at me like crazy. They said, if you're going to take that dog, we recommend you have a, a second dog. Well, I can't have two dogs. I'm only allowed to have one. I'll take this dog, I guess. He seems nice. And so I brought the dog back here, and turns out the dog had intense separation anxiety it ah. couldn't really be by itself for longer than 20 seconds oh geez that's always not great when you have a dog with separation anxiety because then you can't go to the bathroom or take a shower yeah. or leave it outside of the room if you and your partner want to have some some fun times patty cake yes you can't you can't leave the dog outside it makes you feel bad because one you're getting annoyed at this dog the dog just wants to be loved. The dog just wants to be... You're getting annoyed at the dog, and then also you feel bad that you're getting annoyed at the dog, and you feel bad for the dog. Anyway, I brought the dog back the next day. Yeah, yep. I uh, let them know that they probably should have a second dog with them because that dog has separation anxiety. I probably could have kept the dog because I am in my house like 90% of the time anyway. I hardly ever leave, so if it was going to be by itself, not with another dog, I wouldn't have been a bad owner, but... yeah. I figured he could probably find a better home. Yeah, I'm sure I, I hope the dog did find a better place. Oh, I'm sure. It, I never saw it relisted on the shelter, on the humane rescue site, because I'm sure it got adopted immediately because it was such a well-behaved dog. What is the next thing on my list? Ah, the next thing on my list. I was the luckiest boy in North America, and I somehow managed to get a PlayStation 5. Oh, I thought you were going to say girlfriend. That's what you're leading into <laughs> PlayStation 5, yeah, that's also good. That is also good. Of, of the two, which would you have preferred to get this year? Well, I, <laughs> I had the girlfriend before, so, so the PlayStation so, so 5 you have to say was this play, year. You have to say yeah. PlayStation 5. So, so still PlayStation 5. <laughs> um, yeah, the PlayStation 5, I don't know. I basically, I think my girlfriend was the one that told me like, oh yeah, uh, check this, this Twitter thing because they say when things will restock. Or she basically told me like, I saw a Twitter thing that says Walmart is going to be restocking today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of funny because I was at work when I found out about this and there wasn't anything for me to check in at the moment. So I'm just like hitting F5 on Walmart's page just <laughs> over and over again, waiting for it to re I like, I made an account on Walmart early oh, so that I could, <laughs> so that I could just put my, my payment information in there. How desperate you must be oh to God. make an account on walmart.com. I made an account on there. I'm hitting F5 and my boss comes in and he's like, hey, what are you doing? And I'm like, I heard that Walmart's getting PlayStation 5s today. He just like runs back to his office. He's hitting <laughs> F5 at the same time. We're both just trying to get one. I somehow managed to get in and get a PlayStation 5 and I had ordered the digital version. Mm -hmm. And then they sent me a, an email like an hour after I got it. I couldn't even believe I snagged this thing. Mm -hmm. I got so incredibly lucky that I got it. And that I didn't have to go through a fucking scalper because I was not going to go through a scalper to get my PS5. Mm -hmm. I'm not buying into that shit. Yeah. I finally managed to get one and they sent me an email an hour later like, whoopsie doodle, we accidentally sold out of all the digital PlayStation 5s. I'm just, no, just screaming for like 20 minutes. And then it says in the, at the bottom of the thing, so we're upgrading you to a PS5 disc version. Oh, okay. For free. So now your PlayStation can play discs. So now I, I got the more expensive one for the cost of the, the cheaper one. Handy. But yeah, now I finally have a PlayStation 5. I finally have one. I guess, what are you looking forward to playing on your PlayStation 5 that you Elden can't Ring. play on your PC? Elden Ring. Uh, Returnal has been really cool. Returnal is a very cool game. I really like that one. Um, Demon Souls, the Demon Souls remake is awesome. Mm. Um, it's really so. I have control both on PC and on PS5, and it looks so good on PlayStation Five. Okay, it's really nice. There's been a lot of games, a lot of FromSoft games that are better to play with a controller anyway. Ah, uh, okay. That I really like playing on PlayStation Five. That's fair enough. Yeah, I, when Elden Ring comes out, I'm definitely buying Elden Ring for PS5. Mm -hmm. That'll also reduce the amount of hackers. Because there will... Oh, okay. In any game, there's going to be hackers. So you're going to buy it on the PlayStation and not the PC, because the PC is more likely to be riddled with hackers. I wouldn't say riddled with, but there are more likely to be hackers on PlayStation than there are on... Or there's more likely to be hackers on PC than there are on PS5. And also, it's just the advantage of... 
the PS5 is going to have more graphics ability than my PC will. Mm. So the game will look better on my PS5. Or at the very least, will run better on my PS5. Okay. The haptic controls are super cool. In certain games, the triggers will have more resistance if you're, like, shooting guns. That's the haptic feedback. Is the more resistance on the triggers? Yeah. I'm really enjoying having it. I feel incredibly lucky that I managed to get one. Does it play Blu-rays? Yeah. It plays Blu-rays, so I still have a Blu-ray player. Does it play HD DVDs? I don't think so. I don't think anything plays HD DVDs anymore. Do you even have any Blu-rays outside of video games? I do have some Blu-rays, yeah. I have some movies on Blu-ray. I bought, um... Let me guess. Like, Columbo. You got Columbo on Blu-ray. No, Columbo's just on regular discs. Okay. The Shining. A lot of, uh, a lot of movies that I think are very impressive, I bought those on, on Blu-ray. I have Come and See on Blu-ray... What else do I have? I have Stalker. I feel like a lot of people don't have disc players anymore. They don't get, they don't watch DVDs and they don't watch Blu-rays. They just stream things. But there are some things that aren't going to look nearly as good unless you're watching them on a disc. For example, uh, I think The Shining has a good like 15 or 20 minutes at the end of the game where it's he- snowing heavily. And snow does not stream it well at does all. does not stream well. So it's really nice having that. Anything with intense particles flying around, little bits, a lot of flashy, rapidly firing bits of confetti. Confetti screws up everything. Snow screws up everything. Rain screws up everything. If you want the clearest crystal picture on that stuff, you kind of got to go with the disc. Yeah. Streaming isn't going to work. I still have a lot of discs and movies uh, just because there's a lot of stuff that I I like watching and I want to have it in like the highest quality I can get it. That's one of the things that actually I don't think a lot of people know know about me is that I'm actually I'm I'm kind of a movie buff. I like I <laughs> you're certainly more of a movie buff than I am. I there's a lot of movies that I'm absolutely love and I think are really good. I know we don't need to go into those right now. Oh, I got 1917 on Blu-ray. Okay. Uh, a lot of people completely forgot about that movie. I think that movie is very visually impressive, especially because they made the whole movie look like it was filmed in one take. They they used they used camera tricks to basically make the movie look like it's just filmed from one camera that just moves around the whole time. That's an impressive technique, I suppose. Yeah, it's very it's very cool. It's very good looking. What's what's the next thing on your list now that I've I've discussed my PlayStation 5? Something else that I forgot happened this year was I quit my day job. Ooh. So I was able to start transitioning into doing this full time. Yes. So I am quite happy to be done with that job. I'll get into specifics, I'm sure, some other day, but I was tired of doing the construction job. Yeah. Going out to different houses, trying to troubleshoot their problems. The van that I used to drive had bald tires, so... You've you've discussed before the things that were infuriating about that job. Maybe not at length, but you've discussed it before. Yeah. I think the bald tires are one of the... Like, it's, it's an indicator of how irritating that job was. The job wasn't bad, but I had to do a lot of irritating things like drive this van that had no tread on it everywhere. In the snow. So it would get stuck on the snow or a thin layer of sand. Or grass. Or going uphill. Yeah, I was... It's always tough going to a construction site because it's a regular house, but there's like 30 people parking there. So they're like, oh yeah, just park off the side of the road. And I'd say, if I do that, I'm never going to get back out. Yeah, I won't be able to get out. So once I quit that job... Talked to my boss a few months later. Oh, yeah, I got tread. I got to do tires as soon as I had. Yeah, of course you did, because now course. you have to do it. Yeah. Were you were you with me on the pipeline survey job when our work truck got stuck? Because for some reason, our work truck was a rear wheel drive only pickup truck. Do I remember us getting stuck on the pipeline? We had to we had to call a, a wrecker to come pull us out because mm. we couldn't. No, I wasn't there for that. Oh, I, man. I never heard of that. Yeah, that was that was fun. No, the pipeline job. The pipeline. At some point, maybe we should talk about that job, too, and just all the horrible things that happened there. We should, before we forget everything and purge it from our memory. That job was how I got sun poisoning for the first time. Oh. Yeah. There was poison ivy everywhere. Yep. Lots of fun things at that job. Yeah, that was great. Mm -hmm. And then the poison ivy, the anti-poison ivy soap wasn't even in the truck that needed it. Yeah, working like 18-hour days. Man, we got taken for a ride. Certainly you did. Yeah. Twice I did. Yes. Because I was because I was poor and desperate. You went back. Yep. Yep. But anyway, yeah, now I'm able to do this full time, able to make more videos, and I'm happy about that. Well, my next thing on the list was that I was able to do more work on the channel because I also am basically 
effectively working on the channel with you full time. <laughs> you have reduced your hours to the point where you're only really sticking around so you can get some of the benefits out of that gun shop. Well, I mean, I'm I'm still working there quite a bit. I generally I only work there one day a week, but that one day a week I'm there for like ten hours. Yeah, I so you, you go there, you're there for ten hours, you check out the guns, see what's on sale, and gets you put your ear down to the ground and you hear what's going on. See see what new things have been released. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Getting a seven hundred dollar handgun for two hundred dollars. Little perks like that. That was that one thing. Yeah, little perks like that. It's been really nice to uh be able to work on the channel. I'm trying to do much more streaming. I'm trying to stream at least two days a week. Part of my problem is that once it becomes like an actual thing that's written down, it's like, oh no, now people will be disappointed if I don't do the thing. Yeah. And uh, so that's why I haven't actually like written down anywhere. I stream on Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. Because the moment I write it down, it suddenly becomes Now like, it's an obligation. Yeah. Now it's a daunting thing you have to do instead of a thing you want to do. Yeah, exactly. So I basically, I stream, I try to stream every Saturday and Sunday but you don't always. But I don't always. So, yeah. but yeah, that was that was the next thing. The next thing on my list was basically the same as yours. The that we're able to dedicate more time to the channel and makes us both happier. It's been it's been really nice. Um, hopefully we'll have uh we'll have some merch coming out in the future. That was on my to do list this year, but I never got around to it. I would really like to do that. Um, even if it's just some basic things, I kind of want to just start a red bubble. We need to start like a red bubble store or something. Something. So that people can order any of the stuff we make. People can just order it on whatever. Mm, yes. So like if you want it on a shirt, cool. Here it is on a shirt. You want it on a sticker? Cool. Here it is on a sticker. We'll have to figure out the details and that stuff later. I'm too lazy. Uh, what was what's the next thing on your list? I don't have much else to say about this year because honestly, this year both simultaneously feels so distant in the past and also it doesn't even feel like it's over. Like 2021 is almost over. I barely remember anything about it. What's the year skipped by so fast. Oh, see, so it was fast for you? It like I said, it was so fast and also like all this stuff happened in January and July and it feels like eons ago. One of the things that I always hear from people when they get older, and it makes sense, is that when they get older, they're like, everything just goes by so quickly now. Like, but it, I mean, it makes sense because statistically, when you're, when you're a little kid, everything seems like it takes forever because when you're five, one year is one fifth of your life. Yeah. But when you're 80, one year is one eightieth of your life. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it makes sense that things would go by. But for me, like this year has felt like it's been like two years this year has felt like it's gone on forever. Yeah, maybe because it's blending in with last year. It's kind of been a, a malaise of gray. I don't know. It's felt like it's just felt like a really long year for me. But I also one of the things that I generally try to do is I always try to do something new every day. Mm -hmm. I try to do something that's new or different every single day because that's one of the ways that you keep life new and interesting is by doing something new. When you do something novel every day, your brain remembers it more than if you just do the same mundane thing on, on a daily basis. Sure. And maybe that's why this year felt like it skipped on bias because I did so much over and over repetitively. Maybe. That every day felt like pretty similar to the previous days. Speaking of new things, uh, I developed a new hobby this year. I discovered that something that I really like doing, one, because I'm mechanically inclined, is uh, playing with RC crawlers. Little remote control cars they're, that can climb via uh, climb rocks and stuff. They're not really little though. It's pretty big. I mean, it's like a Tonka truck when you're a kid. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's one tenth scale, so it's honestly it's like a good foot and a half, two feet long. <laughs> I, it's a de it's a decently long like vehicle. Mm -hmm. It weighs a good amount, but yeah, it's been a lot of fun playing around with those. And there's just the amount of accessories that are available for them. Mm. You can get little winches that actually work. You can put lighting kits on them that when you turn the steering wheel, it turns on little turn signals to the left and right. It's been really fun just playing around with a little RC car. It's something that's kind of, it's gotten me outside and doing stuff. It's fun to work on them because the little RC crawlers are, other than the fact that the motor is electric and not a little gasoline engine, yeah. they have functional shock absorbers. Oh. You can get ones that even have like actual leaf springs in them. Which are a kind of shock absorber. Yeah, it's just like it, it's just an actual instead of coilover springs, it's an it has like little leaf springs. Mm. Older vehicles usually have like leaf springs in them. It's okay. something that's just cheaper. Sure. There's one that I'm looking at getting that's a much more expensive one, but it's something that when I order it, 
it would be like a Lego set, only I have to I have to put the entire thing together and paint it. Mm-hmm. And I have to buy electronics for it. Alright. It's I don't know, it's something that I'm I'm looking at doing. I've generally really enjoyed playing with for anyone that's wondering that isn't that is also invested in like RC vehicles. I bought a Traxxas TRX4. Is that the one you brought over to my house a while yeah, ago? Yeah, I think that's the one I brought up. That's the one I brought over here. You're having it crawl over all the foliage outside my place? Oh, yeah. They got some little grip to them. They're a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed playing around with it. They're not prohibitively expensive either. Would you say they're cheaper than having an actual drone? Oh, yeah, they're definitely cheap because drones are like $1,000. Yeah, 1000 2000 Yeah, this one that I bought was like... I And I bought the like cheapest one of the TRX-4s, and the one I bought was like... Three, four hundred dollars. And you probably can't fly this one into the ocean by mistake. Yeah, not really. It'd be really hard to drive it into the ocean accidentally. <laughs> they had a pretty sharp turn radius, too. Like They stop on a dime, too, don't they? Oh, yeah. And, like, you can put them on different things. Uh, mine even has, mine doesn't even have that great of a turning radius because mine, the differentials are always locked. I brought it over to my friend's house and I was showing one of my friends and basically he bought one the exact same day. He was just like, <laughs> oh, my God, I have to have one. <laughs> so... He got one too, and he got the one that's better than mine. So his, you can <laughs> you can lock and unlock the differentials on his, and his has a two speed transmission. Mine is just one speed, and the diffs are always locked. I feel like all the stuff we enjoyed as kids, and then we outgrew, is now coming back into vogue. Like remote control vehicles, we're driving those now. Having uh, hobbies is fun. I like playing with a little RC car. I legitimately get excited thinking about putting different parts on my RC car. Sure. It's super fun. Yeah, RC cars, RC, remote, remote control, anything is coming back into vogue. I know there are people that do coloring as a therapeutic exercise. They grab yeah. some crayons. Have, have fun coloring shit. Yeah, the thing that three-year-olds do. We got 30 and 40-year-olds doing it to keep their motor skills sharp and just do something fun. Yeah, I I have really enjoyed playing with an RC car. And the problem, one of the reasons I was hesitant to get back into RC cars for the longest time is because I remembered the ones from I when I was a kid that had like NICAD battery, like the nickel cadmium batteries, yeah. where you would charge the battery for four and a half hours and, and then it would for- run for 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. God, man, that just sucked. Now, they have, like, lithium polymer. They have, like, LiPo batteries. I can charge this battery in about 45 minutes to an hour, and then I can drive my little RC crawler for, like, three hours before it finally dies. All right. So, it, yeah, I get plenty of runtime out of this thing. Cool. It has been so much fun driving it. I'm I'm glad that I got that. Cassettes is another thing that I've I've had a lot of fun. That's another hobby I've had a lot of fun with is just... Recording music to cassette. <laughs> Recording things off the radio onto cassette. It's just like legitimately, I plug my, I fi- I make a playlist on Spotify. I plug my phone into the cassette player and turn off everything on my phone, like block all incoming calls, block all text messages, and then just record that playlist onto cassette. <laughs> Come on. That has been super fun. Uh, I... Again, reminiscent of your childhood, I suppose there could be some nostalgia in that. It's been super fun. I love just having music on cassette. That's been a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed doing that. Little cassette player. Oh, no, there's a song coming on the radio. Hurry up, quick, press the record button so I can listen to the song whenever I want. Well, I don't ever listen to the radio. Also, the cassette player I bought is very expensive. (laughs) It was a very, very expensive cassette player. Jeez. I guess I could talk about games that came out this year that I've been very excited about or that I had a lot of fun playing. Oh, yeah, we could talk about games and media we've enjoyed this year. Yeah, why not? I'm probably going to have more games. I'm assuming you're going to have more TV shows because there's several shows that you told me about that you really enjoyed this year. I do, but I, I struggle to remember them off the top of my head. But, uh, yeah, there's sure. the one that's the conspiracy theory show. Inside Job. Yeah, that was yeah, good. You seem, to, you seem to really like that one. I've watched a couple bits of it. I haven't watched a full episode. I really enjoyed the animated show. It was a lot funnier than I thought it was going to be. John DiMaggio was a, a half dolphin, half human hybrid man. That was oh, fun. That was, that was John DiMaggio? Yeah, uh, Bender is playing. <laughs> is, that, is it John DiMaggio? Yeah. Well, yeah, but the guy that plays Bender plays the, the porpoise yeah. man. I mean, he doesn't just play Bender. He's done like a thousand other things. But yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I, I enjoyed that show. I recently watched Hit Monkey because that crossed my eye. Hit Monkey was a good show. I'd seen ads for it, and I hadn't really thought anything of it. Yeah, it's a show about a monkey that becomes a hitman, starts taking out mafia bosses. Good stuff. So those are, those are two shows from, from Mike that he genuinely enjoyed. I didn't really watch any shows this year 
But I will say that one of the games that came out this year that I enjoyed very much was the Ultimate Edition of Control. Okay. The Control Ultimate Edition came out this year. Man, I really like that game. Uh Uh-huh. That game is so good. It's so... It just looks amazing. It looks good, yeah. The storyline I thought was really cool, but I also loved Alan Wake. And uh, basically, most of the other games Remedy has come out with, I really enjoy playing. Yeah, I played that for a day on stream. I thought it was okay, but I don't think it was my kind of game. But I could see why you would enjoy it. Man, were there any games that came out this year that I actually gave a crap about? I don't know. What games even came out this year? Uh, Well, that game came out this year. Resident Evil 8 came out. Wait, was that this year? That was this year. Again, feels like an eternity ago. Yeah. Resident Evil 8 came out, and uh, my waifu... I'm still asking, is there any good games that came out this year that I played? Resident Evil 8. Good games. Resident Evil 8. Good games. Resident Evil 8. I don't think we're on the same page here. Had Lady Dim- Dimitriescu in it? Mm-hmm. Yes. 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 Everyone's favorite eight foot tall vamp mommy. I. You've already drooled over her for the last three episodes. Yes. Yep. Um. You know what game? It's a remake of a game. It came out, th- but it did come out this year, which is Metopia. Oh. I actually enjoyed that game way more than I thought I was going to. A little me game for your Switch, eh? Yeah. It's a little. It's a little. It's. I, it's not an RPG. It's a little turn based fantasy game where you put me's into it you can download me's that people have created and the me creator is extensive in that game Mm -hmm. you can make some incredibly customized me's and it results in very funny things like having a healer in your party who is dio (laughs) dio from jojo dio from jojo and also you have hagrid in your party and Hagrid just like bonks someone with a giant hammer and screams, you're a wizard, Harry. When I hear me universe, I just think of like all of the me's from the Wii U or yeah. from the Nintendo Wii sitting around singing things in a chorus or putting on little plays or maybe even little mini games. I don't think actual game. Yeah, it is an actual game and it is with it a, is a lot more fun than I thought it would be. With like stories and everyone's yeah. like roles and class passes yeah, it, when you whenever whenever a new me shows up and joins your party you assign them a job which there's all kinds of different ones there's you know the the, the, the typical fantasy rpg jobs of knight and wizard bard. and there's knight and wizard and, bard. and i'll get to it okay but then you start getting other jobs later like scientist and pop star mm-hmm. and you get kind of there one of them is a cat a cat is the role, huh? Yeah, a cat is the job that they have. Okay. Uh, cook or chef is one of the jobs, which is probably one of my favorite ones in the game. Okay. Because what you can do as the chef is you can cook a very spicy meal that you can offer to somebody else without telling them it's spicy, and then they breathe fire on the enemy. Oh, all right. Yeah, it's it's full of fun little goofy things like that, and I have enjoyed that game way more than i thought i would good i thought it was going to be just this fun thing that i would play for maybe 10 15 minutes and i would be like yeah okay whatever that was enjoyable but no it's actually been quite fun okay i'm glad you've been able to enjoy it it's a lot of fun to also make little me's for your friends and put them in there you can set things where two me's will go out and they'll go like fishing or something or they'll go to a movie (laughs) and it's just got these fun little dialogue lines it's been very enjoyable okay Cool. I, you'll have to show it to me sometime. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure there are other shows and games that I've watched and played, but I really don't remember any of them, especially not from the first six months of this year. So I, I, that's pretty much all I got to say. I just like working on the channel and editing the videos. Oh, I guess that's something I could talk about. Yeah, I've, I had been using Adobe Premiere Pro 2017 for the last few years. Mm-hmm. And it's always itching to upgrade. You got to upgrade. You got to upgrade me. And upgrade. I'm, upgrade. I'm thinking, yeah, you know, I feel like maybe no. I feel like maybe I'll just stick with what I know. I just, I'll stay with 2017. But the most recent edition, Adobe 2021, had auto captioning, which is a functionality I would obviously be interested in. Yeah. So I learned how to do a bit of that, and it does save me a fair amount of time. So I learned how to do that technique. I learned how to puppet characters for the Frontier series. Your editing, like, I swear your editing gets better every video. Maybe not every video, but every once in a while I do pick up a new trick and experiment around and take a day or two just to poke around in the new features or look up a tutorial on how to improve my techniques. Yeah, just always making new edits. 
They're very time consuming, but I always feel like they're worthwhile. I've been very impressed with the edits that you have you have been doing as of late. Well, thank you. I think you're doing you're doing a very good job on editing videos. You're doing a really good job on just like just improving everything. I appreciate you saying so. Adobe 2021 is largely the exact same thing with a few new things, but for some reason it doesn't run as smoothly. Mm. It's uh, it's a very a little more intense, causes a lot more stuttering. I have to be very patient with that. Yeah. I have to be very patient with it because I will tell the video, okay, pause now. And then seven seconds later, it will stop playing. So you've got to be very patient with it. That doesn't sound fun. Yes. What is another thing? Oh, uh, the game Back for Blood came out this year. I really enjoyed it. I feel like it took a lot of unnecessary flack. Because it wasn't Left 4 Dead 3? Yeah, because it wasn't Left 4 Dead 3, and everybody expected it to be Left 4 Dead 3. So everyone was like, yeah, this game sucks. It's not Left 4 Dead 3. Uh, I don't care about any of the characters in this campaign. Mm-hmm. As if anybody cared about any of the characters in the first Left 4 Dead. Well, except Bill. I don't know much about those games, but I, I do know the characters. That They were kind of memorable. Yeah, but I, I have really enjoyed playing Back 4 Blood. People were complaining that the AI is terrible. And yeah, if you're just playing by yourself, the AI sucks. Mm-hmm. But the AI sucks in Left 4 Dead as well. Yeah. They're really bad. Well, it's 10 years later. You would expect some improvements. If it's the exact same AI, it's, it's right to criticize. I have still greatly enjoyed playing it. it. Basically, what I expected is just an improved version of Left 4 Dead 2. And what I got was an improved version of Left 4 Dead 2. Okay. And I have enjoyed playing the entire game. I think the kind of randomized weapons and randomized attachments for weapons is... I actually, I kind of like it. Sounds like it would add replayability to the game. Yeah, normally I'm not a huge fan of that. And they are coming out with more story missions later. Hmm. So this is just, it's come out now. I've genuinely enjoyed playing Back for Blood. I, I think it's been a lot of fun. It's definitely not a bad game. I think it was kind of treated unfairly. I didn't hear any negative reviews about it, but maybe because I wasn't part of the community, I didn't hear it. Yeah, any. I I feel like most of the negative reviews were people that were just complaining for the sake of complaining, well, maybe. honestly. I, I kind of feel like now people just want something to complain about. But yeah, I have, I've greatly enjoyed playing it. I think it's been a lot of fun. Probably one of my, I think it's one of my favorite games from this year. Um, Do you think it's a game I would enjoy playing? Those kinds of games... Those- did you like playing... Left 4 Dead. See, that's like, like I said, I never played those games, but I'm familiar with the characters. Do you like playing cooperative shooters where you're shooting at zombos? It seems like it would be a fun thing that I would enjoy, but maybe there's a mechanic in there that I'd hate or something like that that you'd be familiar with it or you'd be more forgiving of. I guess I can't really think of anything in it that is like incredibly infuriating. The things that would start to annoy me in Back for Blood is when, uh, and again, it's still just, it's AI stuff. There have been times where I'm playing with three people and one of them is just an AI mm. and we're like all down and it's just shooting at zombies instead of trying to get somebody back up. Mm. It's kind of like you need to pick the priority here. Okay. Okay. Uh, but other than that, yeah, I've enjoyed playing it. It's been a lot of fun. The character that I always play is named Hoffman. He's voiced by the same person that plays Rigby on regular show. <laughs> so occasionally you just hear Rigby saying stuff and it is really his voice lines absolutely fucking kill me. Ah, they're hilarious, eh? He is so... He's like a weird conspiracy theorist, <laughs> but he's so much fun just to play as. I feel like you're selling me on it, so we'll have to play it sometime in the yeah, future. Yeah, I, I, honestly, I would not be opposed to gifting you a copy of it, and then we, we like, play it on stream, or we... How long would you say the game is? Like, maybe 14 hours? Um, one single it's a run? good amount, and the nice thing about it is that you can start at basically any point in the story. Oh, all right. So, like, in Left 4 Dead 2, you can basically, if I recall correctly, you can really only start at the beginning of a campaign. In this game, you can start at basically any point in the campaign where you exit from a save room. Okay. Uh, The only downside to doing that is you don't start with any of the advanced gear. Hmm. More of the advanced gear will drop later in the campaign, but you don't start with any of it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, I would would definitely play that with you at some point. We'll have to see if we can get Ryan in there, too, because Ryan and I have basically been playing the game. Okay. 
sometimes because the game uses a director AI, kind of like just like Left 4 Dead did. Uh, the director AI is a term I only recently picked up, but that's where the the game is running like a dungeon master almost. Yeah, it, it's an it's an adaptive difficulty thing. Okay, it's a thing where there's a there is the game AI and then there is the director AI. In so, quotation marks, that is watching the whole time that says, "Oh, you're doing well. Okay, now I'm gonna hit you with shit." Or, "Oh, you're doing <laughs> shitty. All right, I'm gonna throw some stuff for you." Okay, okay. Sometimes the director AI is kind of an asshole. <laughs> We've had a couple times where it's like, "Oh, by the way, you've got armored enemies, and also it's fog, and also it's the middle of the night." Great. Now I can't see anything. <laughs> There's been a couple times that I've played where stuff like that has happened. And sometimes when stuff like that happens, it's usually right at the beginning. And we're just like, I don't want to deal with this there, Surly. So let's just fucking re-roll the campaign. Okay. But yeah, it's been an enjoyable experience. I really like playing it. It's All been right. fun. Sounds good. Speaking of games we should play together, I just was reminded that I played Valkyria Chronicles 4, which is probably not a game we should play together because I've got some qualms with that game. I don't remember if we discussed it. In, pod, in the podcast before. Uh, to summarize, I suppose, it's a game that's got many, many cutscenes, very poor pacing. Mm -hmm. It's got a cliche, forgivable but forgettable story. Forgivable but forgettable characters. There are a couple of gems in there. But largely, I'd say the game is just watching cutscenes play out. And From what I understand, one of the major downsides of it is that because the cutscenes are so long, if you skip them... You end up in the middle of a battle that you have no idea what the hell is happening. Right. You have no context for what's going on. Mm. And you're also down like six or seven people and you don't know why. That's the trade-off. Either you skip the story and you have no idea what's going on, or you have to sit there and press A, press A, press, press A, a, press yeah. a forward, forward the story. That's the kind of design. It's not that far off from Valkyria Chronicles 1, but it has been a good 10 to 15 years since that game came out. You'd think they could have made a bit more improvements to it. Yeah. I guess if you enjoy that game, more power to you, but I found it incredibly tedious. And as much as I wanted to see the end of it, I couldn't get to the end of it because I just couldn't slog my way through it. I wouldn't mind showcasing it. It had some good ideas. It's got some fun moments. Mm -hmm. It's got some fun characters. It's got some mechanical improvements. The the uh, the mortar class is kind of fun. Some that of the characters seemed, honestly, are kind of fun. I kind of wanted to try it just to, just to try the mortar class, but after hearing you talk about it, I'm just like, I just don't care. The mortar class is really fun, except the other team, the enemy team, the Empire. The they Evil also Empire. have them, and they just <laughs> fire way more frequently than you get to. Yes, they fire while you're trying to relocate your troops and move them around the battlefield. So you are constantly being barraged by mortars, which makes sense in the battlefield, but is also also very annoying. On the topic of mortars, but changing which game it is, mm -hmm. one of the things that I always thought was fun about Battlefield 3, you could have a mortar... As like one of your, I think it was the the gunner class, you could get a mortar system as one of your things. And a lot of people would play with them, would use the mortar the same way that they would use the machine gun in which they would just camp in one exact spot <laughs> and just fire the machine gun until they were basically out of ammo or fire the mortar system until they were out of ammo. Nobody really played smart with those. Spray and pray with the mortars. And the thing is, whenever you fire a mortar, it shows up on the map where you fired the mortar from. So what I would just end up doing is I would just spawn in with a mortar, look where somebody had fired a mortar from, drop two rounds on their position, and then get up and move somewhere else. Okay. Because they had apparently never figured out that counter-battery fire is a thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would go through games and get like 10, 15 mortar kills because people just didn't recognize that you can move the mortar to another spot. That's the point of having a lightweight mortar. Well, Zach, they fixed that in Battlefield 2042. Haven't you played that? No, I haven't played tw Battlefield 2042 because Battlefield 2042, EA and DICE went, Oh, uh, you know the formula we had that's worked really well for every single Battlefield? Yeah, scrap it and we're going to create a hero-based shooter game. Oh, okay. Yeah, Battlefield 2042 is a hero shooter. Also, you wouldn't be able to follow the plot if you've missed all games in between three and 2042. There's no cohesive plot in between those <laughs> games. You're missing out on 2,039 different plots. There was a Battlefield, what was it, Battlefield 2022? I can't remember. 2070? I don't know. I don't there care. was a Battlefield game that took place in the future. It came out right after Battlefield 2. Uh, it was m mediocre. Okay. Battle the Battlefields that I remember playing and loving to death were Battlefield Bad Company, 
Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4. Also, Battlefield 1 was a lot better than people gave it credit for. I, I really liked Battlefield 1. I only really played Battlefield 3, and that was with you occasionally. That yeah. was it. So I can't really speak to their quality. Uh, I guess the last thing I have, the last thing I have written down here for uh, the some of the great things of 2020 is uh, I got a P90 and registered as a short barrel rifle. You've, how many guns do you have now? Oh, I shouldn't have asked that. Now you're going to list off like 30 oh, gun fine. rides. I have like 20 something guns right now. So I can't guns. remember. So but yeah, I bought, I got a P90 or well, let me rephrase that. I got a PS90 this year, which is the civilian semi-automatic only P90. Okay. I bought one of those and then I registered it as a short barrel rifle mm-hmm. and put the 10 and a half inch military barrel on it. Okay. So I've got a little stumpy P- I brought it over and showed it to you the other day. Yeah, you did. You brought over the P90 and you've, you've done that before. Whenever you get a new gun, you bring it over and you show it to me and I go, well, it's a pretty cool gun. You've given me different varieties of handguns and different varieties of rifles, but the P90 actually surprised me because when I picked it up, it was almost entirely plastic and it felt like a children's toy. Yeah. The P90, much like the Steyr Aug, both of them used extensive use of polymer to keep it very lightweight. To keep it lightweight and to keep cost low on it. But yeah, the P90 is, it's just a closed bolt, straight up blowback operated submachine gun that's just in a weird caliber and uses a weird magazine. Yeah, it was really difficult for my brain to wrap my head around it. It was tough to understand that it was an actual deadly firearm because it feels and it almost kind of smells like a children's toy. It's very plasticky. It just, yeah. it doesn't feel like it's sh- a firearm should. I have held many different guns, but that P90 was something very weird, something very disconcerting in my mind. Why was it disconcerting? Because it didn't feel oh, right. It just, it, because it wasn't metal. It, di- yeah. it didn't feel right. You were saying the exact same things that the U.S. military brass said during the Vietnam War when someone handed them an M16 and said, this is the new service rifle. And they went, too much fucking plastic. <laughs> yeah. But now that's my standard. That is yeah. my standard. And now this thing has even more plastic. Yep. But yeah, I got a P90. I registered as a short barrel rifle. Uh, I absolutely love that thing. That is one of my forever guns. Um, mm-hmm. I'm very glad that I have it now. <laughs> and I've got a little stumpy P90. Your forever guns, like a dog going to its forever home. I have, so there are several guns I own that are my, quote, forever guns and they're guns that i don't think i could ever get rid of Mm -hmm. uh the p90 is one of them my mp5 is another one you like that gun um my probably my m16a4 that's probably another one of my forever guns i have a 1911 that was built in 1918 (laughs) that was my great uncle's um, that one is another one of my, for, I will never be able to get rid of that gun because I got it from my grandpa. Oh yeah. It's got a, a storied history. Yeah. I, I will probably never be able to get rid of that gun and I love having it. I'm, I'm very grateful that I do have it, but at the same time, I kind of wish that my grandpa hadn't given it to me because now I, I just, I'm scared to shoot it like ever. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to damage anything on it. So I'm always scared to like maybe once or twice a year, I'll take it out and shoot it, <laughs> but I won't shoot it like any of my other handguns, mm. which is kind of a bummer because it's such a cool handgun. Maybe frame it and put it above your mantle. I don't know. I you might also get a mantle. I, I do want to make a display at some point where I would need to buy at least two more handguns oh. because I would like to do the M1911, the 1911A1, the Beretta 92FS, and then the SIG M17. And I own the 1911 and I own the M17, so I would need to buy two more handguns. Mm-hmm. And But then it would be every handgun that has been the standard issue service handgun of the United States military during my lifetime. Okay. I think that would be kind of fun to do. All right. I don't really understand it, but we're power to you. Yeah. It's a very uneventful year for me, I feel like. I didn't go out, I didn't do anything, and I didn't stay in and i didn't play anything yeah kind of just put my nose to the grindstone i'm not a workaholic but that's kind of what i've been focusing on as, on as the channel because that's <laughs> everything else sucks oh you can't go out i can't go to a comedy show because after covid all the comedians had to find different jobs so no one's doing live shows anymore and now i can't really enjoy video games because video games all suck so i've got to try and find joy where i can there'll be some better ones coming out we'll see yeah, I guess I can't really think of anything else to add. That's the end of the year review, I suppose. End of the year review. There, Honestly, I d- it wasn't 
wasn't a bad year, I suppose, but it wasn't. wasn't a great it wasn't year. bad for me. Yeah, yeah, it was just. It was fine. I got no complaints. Yeah. I mean, I have complaints, but who's gonna listen? I went to more funerals than I would have liked to. Things like that. I've gone to more funerals and parties. I feel like that's how the general trend of my life going. Ugh. Well, here is to this year, and hopefully, uh, next year is better. Happy New Year's. Hopefully 2022 is good, but I feel like we're going to be disappointed again. I don't know. Stop being so ne- You're supposed to be positive. I'm, am I supposed to be? I'm not I'm not paid enough to be positive. Only positive when I want to be positive. Goodness.